Welcome to Bruce Hurwitz Presents Meet the Experts. I'm your host, Bruce Hurwitz of Hurwitz Strategic Staffing. You can find us on the web at hsstaffing.com. I hope you'll consider us for all your staffing, career counseling, and professional writing needs. Momentarily, I will be joined by Julie Caraccio, and we'll be discussing how to declutter your life. Meet the Experts is sponsored by P&K CPAs. P&K is a full-service accounting firm. They provide accounting and consulting services to businesses ranging from startups to small and mid-cap companies to nonprofits, as well as high net worth individuals. Contact them today for a free consultation at info at pk-cpas.com or call them at 973-882-8810. They will be happy to be of service. Julie, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Bruce. It is my pleasure. Please take a moment or two and introduce yourself to our viewers. Hey, everyone. I'm Julie Caraccio. The name of my business is Reawaken Your Brilliance, and I'm passionate about supporting people in getting organized, clearing clutter in all areas of their life, and becoming more mindful and aware. There is a story that I have that I like to tell. A friend called me up and said that uh, one of his uh, employees had quit in a most um, assertive way. I said to him, what happened? He said, you have to come and see. He had a file room. The guy had taken all the files out and thrown them into the middle of the room. Oh. He looked at me and said, you're great at organizing. How long would it take you to clean this up? And I'm looking at this literal mountain Mm -hmm. of papers and there's a gentleman there who I had yet to be introduced to and I said why don't you just get some lighter fluid and a match and be done with it mm -hmm. and he looked at me and said can't do that let me introduce you to my friend who by now had the, his badge in his hand he was the fire chief or a fire uh, mm -hmm. So he laughed and he said, no, 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 I can't do that. I mm -hmm. said, but if he doesn't put in the claim for uh, uh, for insurance, it's not insurance fraud. He said, it's still arson. Even if justified, there's no such thing as justifiable <laughs> arson. Won't work. And then I noticed that the guy didn't do a very good job. He didn't take anything out of the file folders. So oh, it was okay. just a matter of pu pushing the papers back into the folder mm -hmm. It wasn't that big a uh, disaster. He got his wife and kids to uh, help him and he had it done within a day. What do you mean by decluttering life? So a lot of times when you talk to people, they focus simply on the physical clutter. So my definition I want to start off with is clutter is anything that prevents you from creating the life you choose, deserve, and desire. I'm very specific with those words. It's very purposeful. So I want see, people to see the bigger picture of clutter. So for instance, a messy desk isn't just a messy desk. It's a roadblock to a promotion. Or a really cluttered closet might be preventing a relationship from happening in addition to having too many clothes. So it's like, how can we expand our view and see how everything's related? If I have a cluttered mind, it's going to affect my physical area. If I have clutter in my relationships, that's going to affect my health. And so becoming really aware, how is clutter affecting my life? What is it costing me? Does that make sense? It does. I had a colleague. We had open offices, so cubicles. Mm -hmm. and her desk was a mess. And I was reading Walter Isaacson's biography of uh, Einstein. And she took it, she opened it up, and the last page of the picture of Einstein's desk at Princeton, mm -hmm. which has not been touched since he passed away. And it's a mess. I mean, it's all clutter. And she pointed to the picture, and I said to her, you're not Einstein. <laughs> and she wasn't offended, but there's a book back here, and I remember part of the title, The Anarchy of, and I'm, this is wrong, but the anarchy of disorganization. And it's something when I was getting whatever degree it was in international relations that we had to read. And there was a um, section that I remember to this day where the author wrote that if you take 
a shelf from the Library of Congress mm -hmm. and put it into a Dewey Decimal Library and a shelf from a Dewey Decimal Library and put it into uh, the Library of Congress, those shelves are going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. But if you know where everything is, if it's organized by a, by a system that you have created or that you are using, then while I might think it's a mess, in fact, it isn't. But the other problem is, as I explained to my uh, colleague, when a client comes in and sees her desk as opposed to mine, the reason they want to work with me is my desk appears to be clean and organized. Yeah, I mean, I want to address that on a couple levels. First of all, most of us aren't Einstein. And I will argue till the cows come home that maybe perhaps he's he's a rare exception. But if you have a cluttered desk, it's cluttering your mind. And I had a colleague like that. And I said, hey, I need this for this grant proposal I'm writing. I said, I'll come back in an hour when you found it. Because she had a, a disorganized desk, couldn't find things. Maybe your colleague did, but it's going to take time to find it. I, I don't believe that it's going to take 30 seconds because they're going to have to rifle through everything. You know, they've done studies. People trust you less if you have a messy desk. People, you're going to be passed over for a promotion most likely. So if you that, if that's what you're putting out to the world, in the business world, or personally as well, people are going to hesitate to work with you. And so I don't believe that a messy desk, and I think that that's a fallback. And I think for some people, it's fear, fear they're going to lose information. Now, if I was working with Einstein, what I'd like to do with a lot of people that are creative and like these quote unquote messy desks, I'm a huge fan, maybe because you worked in a cubicle office, you know how they have the cubbies for mail sure. and you'd go and you have your labeled and Bruce would be here and sure, your colleagues sure. would be here. I love those as options for creative people because you can get a little one, you can label it like I'm working on my math project, I'm working on my book. And so if you have all those little bits and scraps, so you organize it and your space is more visually decluttered. And then that way it's for some people lessens their anxiety because a lot of times with that messy desk, there's an anxiety attached and a fear that something's going to be lost. How do you, I, I have no argument with anything you said. Uh, I agree totally. Uh, people are sometimes bit taken back when they see that my workspace is always clean. I only have on it that which I need, the tools that I need to get the job done. And everything you said, cubicles, uh, cubby holes. Yes. Uh, which for me brings back good memories. Mm. Uh I literally started in the mail room at one job and worked my way up to the top or as nice. far up as I, mm -hmm. as was possible. And by distributing the mail, that's how I learned everybody's name and mm -hmm. where they work. But anyways, I use file folders instead of cubbies. It's just more practical. But how do you differentiate? You know, you even if you've got your cubbies, mm -hmm. you can have sub cubbies and sub sub cubbies, and then it just becomes a mess of of cubbies. There can be too much. Absolutely. So how do you avoid that tendency of miniaturizing your organization? Right. Yeah, that's a great question. That's something that I t I consider an organizing mistake. When I worked my when I worked for someone else, I should say my philosophy was you should be able to find anything you need if I've died, right? And so I don't super organize. So let's talk. We'll talk about my files, for example. So I have three main category: business, personal, and financial. And so those are so four uh, drawers. So one for each of those. So personal has things like insurance. So anything insurance related goes in there. Um, business has, I'm trying to remember, stuff for taxes. They're very broad based. So for instance, with insurance, it's going to take me five seconds to find whether it's car, health, life insurance. And I'd rather have take a couple seconds than having it so hyper organized. And the thing is, we as human beings tend to like to take the least possible, you know, do the least amount of work. 
So if I've hyper organized, uh, I'm not going to file that. I'll file that later. Right. Uh, I don't want to file this week. And that way clutter tends to accumulate more. Uh, the other thing that I suggest is if you're like, oh, Julie, I'm not sure. Well, have a little file index, a cheat sheet. So you know that what goes where, but you're more likely to take a moment to sift through a file than to hyper organize it because those systems are super hard to maintain. Now, if you're really rich and you want to pay someone to do that, have at it. Or if like you're retired and you have all the time in the world and want to do that, then enjoy yourself. I'm not going to say don't do that. What I'm going to say is the likelihood of that being kept maintained is not high. Where would you put a business insurance policy? Uh, that would be, oh, that would be for me. Yeah. Oh, this brings up a good point too. I'm so glad you asked this question. For me, it would be in business. It would be probably with my taxes because I don't have a lot. I have with the uh, not a 501c3, whatever. What's the thing that I have for business that I had to sign up? Your tax whatever. ID number. Thank you. Oh, so your tax ID number, right? So I would put it in something like this. Now, this is, I love that you asked this because that's how I do it. You might put it in your personal insurance file because in your mind, well, it's insurance. That's where it should go. And that's the beauty of organizing and decluttering. You have to do it how it makes sense to you. For instance, I like my phone, alphabetize the names by first name. I don't want last name. For whatever reason, first name works better for me. And that's different than most people. So you have to figure out, well, what system works best for me? And how am I likely to remember it? Like I always say to people, if you were to go look for that item and to retrieve it, what would you be thinking it was called? And that should help you dictate what you name your files. I had that with um, another colleague. I organized everything by uh, my resumes, by la by first name. Mm -hmm. She said, "Well, yeah, how are you going to remember the 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 first name? This was on the computer. Okay, we didn't okay things out. We just didn't have the room for the paper file." And I said, "I I, I do it by first name." She said, "Well, how are you going to remember the last the, the the first name?" And I looked at her and said, "How are you going to remember the last name?" So it just didn't. It's it, it's what you're used to. Yes, but it would seem to me that the um, enemy of decluttering is procrastination. Yes, I would agree with that. So oh. how do you advise people to overcome their procrastination? Well, what I believe for a lot of people goes hand in hand with procrastination is feeling overwhelmed. If you haven't decluttered your house in 20 years and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to declutter my entire house. I'd be overwhelmed. Eh, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I can completely understand that. So what I encourage people to do is you break it down into manageable steps. 10 minutes a day is oh, just over 60 hours in a year. You can accomplish a heck of a lot in that amount of time. So for instance, I'd say, what I like to say to people is, is there something that's driving you nuts? You can't eat at the dining room table. Do you have a deadline coming? You're having cabinets put in the garage and they're not going to be able to get in to install them. So the garage needs to be decluttered by the state. Is there something that is urgent? You're not paying your bills on time. Then you need to start in your office to declutter and organize. So those are some questions to begin. And then say, so, you know, again, if it's too much, then schedule 10 minutes a day. If that's too much, schedule five. Now, what I found is the more people do this, the easier it becomes. And you need to write it down and don't tell me you're going to do it someday. I want a date, you know, preferably a time, you know, keep it loosey goosey. You know what? I'm a morning person. So I'm going to do this in the morning when I've got great energy. I don't want to do it when I'm exhausted at the end of the day. And so writing your list, breaking everything down into manageable steps and committing to it. You know, if you struggle, then you hire someone or you have a friend that's good at it and can help you. So it's just, but you know, you have to take that action to move forward. Is there any difference between how you organize in the real, in the <laughs> real world and how you organize electronically, meaning analog versus digital, meaning setting up your computer? I will have people who I am working with and we'll share a screen the way we've 
been done on this uh, Zoom call. And I will see their desktop, meaning their computer mm -hmm. desktop. Yep. And it is a sea of icons. And there was one person I was working with and I said, look, this is ridiculous. I'm stealing your money. You're charging me. Um, I'm charging you by the hour and you can't find anything. Mm -hmm. So let's stop now. And when you've organized the desktop and it's all nice and clean, you give me a call and we'll schedule another one. We won't, and it'll be the continuation of this one. So it won't cost you more money. And he wasn't happy, but he had to do it because he needed me. And I wasn't going to help him until he helped himself. So yeah, I forced him for to you. do it. And he was very appreciative when it was all done. How would you, are there any rules for organizing your computer that aren't true for organizing your real world physical life and vice versa? Great question. What I always recommend to people is to keep them similar. So if I have a similar filing system on paper, I would do it like we've talked about using first name. You and I both like to do that. If I do it in paper files, I'd want to do it on electronic files. I want to keep things the same so you kind of have that system set up. One little tip that I like is for a lot of people who work with other people and have clients, I like to have on the, the desktop frequently used files. So if you have, hey, Bruce, it's so nice talking to you. I'm going to, after we get off the phone, I'm going to send you my assessment. So it's boom there, can attach it. Here is my contract, whatever it is. Things that you use frequently, I would have on a folder on your desk. And it's like, I'm glad that you brought this up also because we have digital clutter. And so you go through the paper files regularly, you need to go through your digital files. And that's really important to keep on top of that. Now you're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Correct. So you have a social media presence. Yes. Social media can become overwhelming and it can clutter your the time on that you spend in the digital world and it can clutter your brain. So 100%. how do you declutter? Great question. So, I mean, again, there's a little bit of a difference between being personal and professional. If I had my way, I wouldn't be on social media. I'm I'm over social media and I wasn't one of the early ones. I mean, but I've been, been on Facebook because I have to for business. So I would say you need to be aware of how much time you're spending on social media. I mean, you can get sucked into a video on YouTube. You can get sucked into, sadly, more and more, it seems, an argument on Facebook. So you have to say, okay, I'm going to allot this amount of time. And I get it. Sometimes, you know, 10 or 15 minutes of of getting a brain dump and just getting everything out of your head, looking, I'd like to look at cat pictures, right? That's a good rest, resting break for me. But you have to be aware of how much time you're spending. You have to look and say, how is this affecting me? You know, they've done all these studies that if you're constantly on social media, you're going to be tend to be more jealous, right? Just, and how things are. And then, you know, most of the things we see on social media aren't real life. Now I'm sadly a Steelers fan. And I posted last night, you know, if I was a drinker, I'd be drunk at this point because this was a really sad game, right? And I'm like, I have to share my my sadness here. But, you know, you just have to be aware. How is it affecting me? And I regularly, I do this in business as well. And I started last year and it's made a huge impact. I take quarterly breaks. I don't uh, I don't post on Sundays. And I tell some of my followers at the beginning of the year, I'm like, hey, you know, follow me. Just know, I'll let you know when I'm taking a break. I have so much content. If you really into it you have more than enough when i'm on a break but what i believe is when i give myself permission and show others i'm doing it it gives them permission to do it as well but i think taking breaks are incredibly important couldn't agree more and i know the results because one day i just got fed up and i said enough with this mm -hmm. and in my case i decided saturday the computer doesn't go on good for you and uh, it really makes a difference. Now, everything we've been discussing, there's, there's an assumption that you have control over your life, that this is a one-person job. <laughs> one man, one woman, that's it. But 
Most people have somebody else. You have, because you wrote this in your bio, you have a husband and you have three cats. Yes. Black cats. I don't know what the significance is of the color, but we won't get into that. How does decluttering happen when there are other people in your world? Great question, because it's been my observation. A lot of times you have one that's a little more disorganized, one that has a little more clutter, and they manage to find everyone. Not the Felix Oscar extreme that we see. And so that's about working together, right? And so For what a I minute, I thought you were referring to Felix the cat, and then I realized uh, the odd couple. So, right. So I'm I'm dating myself, probably. Yeah. I know I am. No so problem. What I, Okay, good. And uh, I just have to add this, the significance of black cats is they are the least likely to be adopted at the shelter. So that's why I'm passionate oh. about that. Uh, so what I say to people, you know, a lot of times when I come into a situation or I can talk about my husband and I, I was like, you know, we, we should organize your tools and, but I didn't want to push it. And then one day he couldn't find the tool that he needed. He had this bucket of tools and it all fell over. He's okay. I'm ready. I'm ready to get organized. So he had to reach a point now because it's what I do. I was completely okay. I'm like, I'm not in his tool space. It's really not affecting me. And someone might be like, well, it's in my bedroom. So one of the things is usually by the time I'm with people, they're fighting and, and it's been a problem for a while. So I say, let's start fresh. Remember we're a team here. The other one is not the enemy, right? You know, I had one client clutter was a part of three divorces. And I was like, hey, you know, then that's we need to, to to do a little more digging and work here. And so and then I would say, how can you do this together now in a situation like this? You're going to have to give a little. So if you're super organized, you know, then maybe you have to, to relax your standards. And so we put a basket by the bedside if your spouse likes to read and they can put the magazines and they put the bat books and they might be thrown up over the place but they're there and they're contained and it's not clutter it's not alphabetized it's not by date or whatever okay then let's give a little and then the same thing with the this person that tends to be more cluttered you're gonna have to step up your game and so like if you have kids i always say kind of relax it a little bit in their own room let them kind of do now don't want mold growing and things like that and food and plates being left but can we relax a little. And in common areas, we have it more structured because everyone has to be here. One of the reasons that I know that you are not a hypocrite is because what is behind you, even though you've chosen to blur your background, I can see four, whatever they are, framed items. Paintings, yes. Or pain, pain, framed paintings that are just about perfectly um, aligned at the bottom. I assume- Husband gets credit for that, not okay. me. <laughs> All right. So it reminds me of the time when I had a job to fill and the employee that the employer, my client was looking for, only cared about one thing, that the person was detail-oriented. Mm -hmm. So I asked questions about complicated projects where they had to be detail oriented. And one fellow I spoke with after the normal pleasantries, I asked him to give me an example of a complicated project that he worked on. And then he started to speak. And then I realized where he was. He was in his bedroom. Nothing wrong with that. The camera was facing the bed. Nothing wrong with that, except for two things. One, the bed was not made. And two, every picture on the wall or whatever it was that was framed was crooked. I don't mean a Christmas tree. I mean that it was each individual item was crooked. No detail-oriented person would invite even virtually somebody into their bedroom if the bed wasn't made. And no detail-oriented person could stand being in a room where things on the wall were crooked. So I went with my eyes and I, I didn't care what he said because my eyes were telling me everything I needed to know. There are people who refuse to admit that impression is reality mm -hmm. and what they have is clutter. 
and we've we mentioned it already in passing, but I want to return to it. They will say, I can find anything. You've already correctly noted that, yeah, they might be able to find it, but it's going to take them a while. And if everything was in a folder or in a cubby, it'd be fine. Reality is a great part of decluttering. Mm -hmm. And facing reality is a problem that a lot of people have in a lot of ways. So how do you get your clients? Although I assume they come to you because they realize that they're living in clutter. So how do they come to that realization and acceptance that they have a problem? Well, there are different reasons. For instance, I had one client, the child said, we're not bringing over the grandchild until you've decluttered. So the big motivation was seeing their grandchild or it's causing, we talked about an organized, disorganized person that's causing strife in a relationship or they're just overwhelmed and no, and because I deal with life clutter and everything, something has to change, but I don't know what that is. I know that I need to take action, but I'm not sure where to start. Or, you know, I've worked with people, the boss is like, clean your desk up or we're going to have a problem. Right. So there's some usually event that really they're like, oh, okay. And I've reached that point and now I know I need to get help. I, it's beyond, I haven't been able to do it because I've people like I've tried for years to get organized and clutter and I can't now I've got to, I've got to get help. It's time. You're right. I've been focusing on physical clutter, but there's also mental clutter. Is there a difference between clutter and hoarding? Hoarding, I don't work with hoarders. You need special training. Hoarding, and it's in the DSM-5, are we on now or whatever, is a, is a, a extreme. A lot of times there's trauma, my understanding, and that that's just how it's manifested. So to me, mental clutter, which you and I have, might be, or I would assume I have, excuse me, might be anxiety. It might be insomnia. It might be not able to turn your brain off and thinking about business 24 seven. That to me is kind of run of the mill. Most people are experiencing that worth hoarders. It's just a completely different ball of wax. I was going to make a joke that a shot of whiskey will, will clear that clutter, but I'm not <laughs> going to because somebody might take me seriously. <laughs> What I am going to do, though, is to share your contact information. And I have one final question for you. Yes. Is there anything that I have not asked you that you wish I had asked you? And if I had asked you, what would you have said? I would say, what would be your best advice for someone who is is decluttering or trying to cluttering or struggle? And I would say, Please just remember this, that you are good enough, you are worthy, and you are loved no matter what, because we're either coming from love or hate. And if we remember that, we can love ourselves. And that's a huge part of taking a first step saying, okay, I need help. That's a, a loving way for myself. So no matter what you've done in your life, you can make it better. Julie, I want to thank you. This has been uh, informative and uh, frankly, quite an enjoyable half hour. I appreciate thank it. And I'm sure our viewers do as well. Thank you so much. I'm Bruce Hurwitz. Thank you for watching. And as always, please stay focused on success.